Hello everyone, Peter Ho here. So today we're going to be doing a sea bass sashimi served with its own skin that's blanched quickly in kelp as well as uh, some condiments that's going to go really well with the sashimi. So the first thing we have to do is clean the fish and scale it and clean the inside and everything. So let's get started. So the scaler that I use to scale the fish, it's this one is made in Japan. You can find, find these scalers in most uh, kitchenware stores. Some of them are like pointy, but these ones are usually the ones in, so made in Japan that are flat, which is the ones that I prefer to use because when you're doing the scaling motion, this this way it when it's flat, it keeps the integrity and you know and the skin like intact and not harm the skin while taking out the scale. So I personally prefer the uh, the flat ones. If you have a big bag like this, then it's good to always just to cover it up a little bit and start the scaling process. This way it's nice and neat when you're done. So basically how I do it is from the tail and you go towards the head. Notice I also, I'm also wearing a, a glove just, just you know, for extra protection because um, sea bass are actually these um, this, the fish, the head here, like some of this, even the scale is actually quite sharp. Um, when you're shopping for for fish, I would say if you want to make it for sashimi, make sure that you actually get it from a very reputable source, and you know, make sure that the fish is actually good for sashimi. Otherwise, you're gonna be ending up in the hospital or just you know, in, in, in the toilet, right? Um, and make sure that they're actually sashimi grade and you know and have fun just eat it as soon as you can and just enjoy it but basically the, the the freshness of the fish is super important another thing is when you're shopping for fish um you know a lot of people say you, know, you look for the, the eyes you know make sure it's nice and bright and the gills you know it's nice and red those are all true as well as um if you feel the fish it actually has a lot of slime that's actually a sign of freshness as well because um, when the fish is killed, they release these, these are natural, like the, the slime is at, basically is natural. So when you get a fish that's without the slime, it's basically that the fish has been like, you know, it's been laying there, lying there for, for a while. So it's actually not that fresh without the slime. Another one, another way to spot a, a, a nice fresh fish is you know how this scale is really hard coming off? Basically, it's another sign of freshness. So if this fish was actually old or like, you know, it's been in, in the fridge for a while and the skin will come right off. And that's usually not a good sign and best not to eat it for such a thing. When you're handling the fish, notice that the, the spikes, the scale, like uh, the fins run this way, so you never, you wanna, you don't want to go this way. You'll really like pinch, get get hurt. So you want to clean the scale first. You go this way. You get all this scale out, and then we'll go through this one more time with a knife to make sure that all the scales are nice and clean. So this time we use a a knife to really clean clean up all the excess. Scales. These parts are like the hardest. This part, you know, let's make sure you really go through it. The scaling part is probably one of the most important because you cannot continue go on like if you don't, you know, if you can't clean the fish properly, right? All right. That's not nice and clean. Now that the scales are done, all clean, all nice and cleaned. We're going to basically. I'm going to cut, use the knife, and cut through the stomach, all the way up to the top, like where the mouth is. And then we'll be using a scissor to take out to release the gill, and take out the the guts all together in one in one motion. Uh, usually, because this is a farm fish, uh, they they probably don't have any eggs or like um, sperms. But when it's wild, you want to make sure, like, you know, sometimes they, they come with eggs, like, you know, or sperm. So you want to make sure you don't puncture all that, all that stuff. But even 
when it's farm line, you just want to be careful. So just use the tip of the knife and just put an incision and then just work your way in like this. This, uh, this part is, you know, you need to give it a little force just to go through. And then we'll go all the way to the side. Okay, just open it up a little bit. We need to release the film right here. This part, so then it actually releases the gill from this collar here. Okay, so we, we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'm just gonna flip it. And maybe you see the film here. This is where we, you know, just make this incision and release it. Hold on a sec. There you go. Like that. Okay. And we'll flip it back again. Okay. So now we'll take a scissor and we'll separate this, the collar here. So there's still some film left. It's okay, we just, you know, just separate it again with the scissor. Now, we're gonna cut this part off, the gill. So we release the gill in this part as well. So now all the gills is fully released. This as well. Okay. okay. So before we pull out the gill along with the guts, this is where we have to do another cut. So we just snip it like that. And then after that, it's released. We take a paper towel and hold onto the gills because it's actually, this part is super sharp. So you don't hurt yourself. And then just start pulling. This part, just, just bring it up. Just bring it up. <laughs> if it gets a little stuck, you can just grab a scissor and then just cut. <laughs> you know, the liver is actually quite nice. We can actually use the liver. Yeah, this liver is actually usable. But this part, this. We don't use this where it makes it really bitter. This is the, uh, what should we call it? I can't remember. So now that we've taken out the gill and the guts and the liver and the heart, there's still the fish bladder that's inside, the sea bass, which is also uh, highly used as uh, for fish maw. This is what you know for uh, fish maw. It's like the dry, basically it's a dry fish bladder. So they, um, they're inside as well. So now we're gonna remove it with a paper towel so this way it gives you more grip we just, just basically just pull so now now that all the blood lines is exposed we'll do a quick rinse of the fish again and then we can start butchering it so I, I usually use a toothbrush to just brush it clean Now the inside is pretty much clean, as you can see. Uh, now we just transfer the fish to the cutting board and cut it dry and start the butchering process. So clean, you're gonna kiss it? No, I'll kiss it. Yeah, right. <laughs> now before we start the butchering, I, I like to dry the fish you know, inside, on you know, both sides, and inside as well. This way just make the work a lot cleaner and you know in case it's excess excess uh, scale as well. So before we start the butchering process, this is the knife that I'm gonna use. It's called Deba in Japanese. It's used usually for butchering fish, sometimes even chicken and you know beef and 
you know, all sorts of stuff that we have to like go through harder like bones or cartilage and stuff. So typically the deva is single beveled, meaning it's only sharpened, it's only got one side sharpened where you see there's an angle here on this side and where the other, whereas the other side is nice and flat. This way, when we cut, it, it basically um, doesn't affect the fish integrity, like the flesh as much and makes a much cleaner cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the head off. As you can see, this is basically our guide. We're gonna go through, this is where we're gonna go, okay? So I usually like to start from the bottom where the, the stomach part is. So this is where I start. Go in, and then go here in an angle. Usually you'll hit uh, the, the center bone here. So it's gonna be a little, like you know, you get some resistance here. So we'll just stop it here. It's fine. And we'll flip the fish and do the same thing on this on the side. So I start from here. Okay. As we get to this, where we stop on the other side. So it's right here. So here's the bone that you have to cut through. This is why I use the Deva because it's so sturdy and very sharp. Make sure it's sharp, you know? And then just sort of just push down a little. And then this whole thing comes off. So now that we've taken off the head, we're gonna start, uh, go ahead and do the, the filleting process. And for me, I like to start off from the from the tail, which is from the stomach side. So I go in from this, make an incision here all the way to the center bone. Once I reach the center bone, I'll rotate the fish around and start from the from the back, and so on. So let's get started. I like starting from the tail side. So basically, we make a small incision first. Okay. And you just look for the bone, kind of just follow it. Let the knife follow the, as close to the bone as possible. Okay. Like this. And then once you reach the center bone, we rotate the fish. Right now, so we'll just rotate it. Okay. I'm gonna start from the head again. I like to make a small incision first and work my way in. So once you reach the center bone, we pretty much just pretty much almost there. And we'll put the fish back again. And we insert the knife this way. Okay, and come out. And then we go from this side and release the fish, the flesh from the center bone. And then let's grab a towel. So for the application that we're doing today, one side of fish is actually enough already. I want to show show you guys how I like to um, pre prepare the fish for storage. Actually, so um, there's a couple things that you need to do before you can actually store the fish properly. This way, you can actually enjoy the fish even after the five days. So basically, I use scissor to cut out. All, um, all the, uh, the f you call these again. So the first thing is to use a scissor to cut out the fins. So you start from the tail side. 
cut. The reason for cutting the fin off is because there's actually a lot of more slime and there's a lot of chance for more bacteria to, um, to get onto the skin and such. So we cut, cut it out. Done all the cut off all the fins. Just dry the fish up it once more. Try out on this the flesh side again. Try out as much moisture as you can. Have this paper towel ready. I have these type of uh, this green looking paper it soaks most of the moisture so that the moisture doesn't go inside the paper and then go into the fish so this this paper is actually very useful but if you don't have it at home it's okay just use just change your paper towel every day and make sure it's nice and dry so basically wrap it up like this okay Make sure that you get rid of as much air as you can so that it's nice and tight. So just for security reasons, we'll do one more wrap. And I usually do another plastic bag. Put it in the bag. This time as well. Also, make sure that you get rid of most of the hair. Two degrees Celsius is probably the best temperature, or even zero. So basically, we're cutting off the rib bone from the from the fish, and make sure that you try to stay as close to the bone as possible. This will be save more flesh. Okay, so. so now that we've got the rib bone out of the fish, the next step is to salt cure the fish and usually the salt curing process is done because um, it gets rid of some excess moisture from the fish also it imparts some uh, umami into the fish so for today's sea bass because it's farm and usually farm fish are higher in oil content so I'm guessing we're gonna need at least 10 to 12 minutes uh, of time uh, the time to cure the fish um, so let's get started. Before I uh, put any salt on the fish, I like to damp the pour that I'll be putting the fish on. And from the pour, I just put some salt. And I'm using uh, fine sea salt. And I usually stay away from table salt because there's iodine in there and then parts these, this, this unwanted flavor that makes the fish taste a little weird. And now we just put the fish on. So now the skin side is all, it's got the salt, right? And then we put a light layer of salt on the flesh. The stomach part, I will use a little bit more salt just because there's extra fat and oil. And we'll just start the timer for 12 minutes. So now we're past around six minutes with the timer. So if you take a closer look, there's a lot of moisture coming out from the fish. And uh, actually from like just touching the flesh, you can sort of just tell like, if it's getting firm, then 
it's actually a sign that the fish is actually pretty pretty good like with the salt curing so instead of 12 minutes I'm guessing this is probably like eight minutes would be probably enough and see all the moisture is coming out all right cut damn man yeah. get your together what like, you're man? doing such a terrible job First time, man. Come on. No, man. Seriously. <laughs> no. It's a hit time. Okay, okay, okay. Next time. Next time. Next time. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. What is this? Oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, next time I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll get the scripts. Better. Yeah, yeah. Man, we're trying to run a show here. I don't know. Come on. Come on. Man. Crap, we're recording the whole time? What the f yeah, So as I was saying earlier, um, I thought 12 minutes is probably what we need, but with the firmness of the flesh, we actually just, it's gonna need eight minutes. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse the fish. You wanna do this quickly so you don't get too much water on the fish. Make sure you wash both sides. So once we've had the fish dry, I'm gonna put transfer this fish onto a bamboo, uh, kind of like a bamboo strainer. Sort of. And if you don't have the bamboo strainer, it's fine. If you have like a just a like a cookie baking rack or something, as long as there's like some some holes, so there's a, a chance for the air to circulate. This way, like the skin side as well as the flesh side will be nice and dry during the drying process in the fridge. So now we just put this in the fridge for 10 to 12 minutes and then we take it out and slice it up for sashimi. While we're waiting for the fish to air dry, um, we're gonna start our, our, our kelp, our kombu dashi, basically our kombu water for the skin that we're gonna blanch inside. This is a, a kombu from Hokkaido, but you can also find all sorts of different types of kombu from like, uh, even we have local ones in, in BC or there's Korean ones and Chinese or from Japan. And um, you don't need much. So basically just break up the kombu into maybe a couple pieces. And for our application today, like two pieces is more than enough. So I'm just gonna break, break this up. And then we'll put this into just the water and just let it slowly, slowly steep and come up to temperature. And you'll see that it actually will expand over time. And I also like to add a little bit of salt in the water. So later on when we put, put the fish skin inside, it actually gets more flavor. Besides salt, also a few drops of uh, sake as well. Probably like tablespoon. That's about it. And then just wait for this to come up to a boil and then we'll put the fish skin inside to let it quickly blanch. So now I'm going to be grabbing some ice, ice cubes for our ice bath. The ice water basically just going to be uh, helping us to chill the skin at once it's blanched. I'm gonna take it back out and then put it into the ice water to stop the cooking. So this way, the skin will be nice and uh, crunchy and a nice texture to it. Before we do that, we have to take out the tendons from the fish. So what I like to do is prepare a little bowl and put some water inside. This way it helps with uh, releasing some of the tendons. We we'll start from here. All right, so we got most of the, got all the bones actually. <laughs> so let's put this in. We can also use this part, like the this fattier part. But for today, 
I I'm gonna just stick to the flesh part. Okay, let's check again for bones. There's no, no bones left. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take out the skin. Usually I like to start from the side just to give myself a little more grip on the on the skin. And then we go from here. Okay. And then you can hold on. Wiggle it as you go forward. And try to get as close to the skin as possible so you don't leave much fish meat on the skin. Let's get this side. Let me flip it over. You got oh, nice beautiful flesh. Oh, see this? This part, this is kind of like the skirt. We can just peel up. This we don't need, but this it's a good snack. So it's like a chef's snack. So this is the skin that I'm gonna use to blanch in the kombu dashi that we prepared earlier. This is the skin is actually really delicious. As you can see, the kombu has like probably like doubled in size. And at this point, we can actually take out the kelp. So we just take it out because pretty much all the flavor is incorporated into the into the water. And so it's gonna stir it around. And then I'm just gonna put the skin inside. And this will take literally probably like 10 to 15 seconds to cook. So you wanna make sure that you don't overcook the skin, otherwise it'll just get too too kind of soft, too soft or soggy. Okay. You'll see how it's curling up. So it's counting six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll put this straight into the ice bath. So now it's nice and cold. Bring it over to this side. Dry with a paper towel. Okay. Just dry it up. You can see that it's actually really, you know, it's bouncy. So this is the texture that we're looking for. So it's nice and you know, like uh, it's got a nice crunch and a nice texture. So if you, if you blanch it too long, it'll get too soft. So it's, that's not what, we're, not, not what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna, I'll cut the skin in a bit. Before we get there, I'm gonna prepare some of the garnishes and condiments. So over here, I have some chives, some milga. This is uh, a type of ginger, it's in the ginger family. It's a lot more, um, softer in flavor it's very light but it's got that ginger ginger flavor this is sudachi it's a type of citrus also from japan it's also very 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 um, fragrant and it's not so so pungent that it's you know like so pungent like a lime or lemon it's a lot more mellow but it's super fragrant and it goes so well with these uh, white flesh fish like in japanese they call it shiromi so that's like, um, yeah, literally means white flesh fish. So some white flesh fish would be like a uh, sea bass, um, snapper, or flounder. So for the chive, super easy. Basically, I'm just gonna cut them into sections. Okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna cut lengthwise. That's pretty much all I need. Just cut it as thin as you can. It would be nice if we run this, put this into the ice water, just to let it like crisp up a little bit. And now for the chai. So I'm gonna cut them into, well, probably like one centimeter, well, one, one and a half centimeter length. Enough for it, so when we eat it, it's you know, it's not too much in the, too much of a mouthful. 
Another garnish is the, we call this Hanaho Jiso. It's the flower of the Shiso leaf. It makes, it makes the dish a lot prettier and also imparts another flavor to the dish. And for the sudachi, I'm basically just gonna slice like so. Okay. This is basically all we need to squeeze onto the fish. And then you can, wow, well, we you can smell this. It's so, so nice. This is probably like one of my most favorite citrus in the whole world. Okay, now that we've all done all of this, we'll slice some, some of the skin. Nice and you know, fairly generous chunk. That's where you get nice um, texture and good mouth. Okay. So this is basically a fresh wasabi root, as most of you probably know. But if you don't, this is what it looks like. And um, it's kind of scraped, maybe you know, ten. Oh, 10 to 12 minutes or 10 minutes before we're going to use it. You don't need to apply too much pressure, it's just you know, let the grater do the job. Ooh, pungent. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to slice. So before I slice, like, you know, there's um, different styles of slicing for sashimi. There's like usuzuki, meaning like the thin slices. But for me personally, I like to have a little thickness, but not too thick. Uh, so, well, I'll just show you guys. Um, I personally don't like it too thin, just because then you can't really taste much, right? So, I'll take off this this part. Now is a good way to start this from here. So, I would. Probably not go so thin that you can see the bottom of the plate. I mean, it shows off your knife technique, but I like to make sure that we can actually taste you know, and enjoy the fish. And because I have several condiments, I want to make sure that we have enough slices so we can like try it with every single condiment. So maybe five slices. There we go. Um, because of so many condiments that I'm using, um, basically I want to separate the dry from the wet. So this one, basically I'm going to put it in soy, as soy sauce. The fish will be in here, and the um, the other condiments will be in this clip right here. So let's get started. Let's, let's you know, just really have fun with it. But at the same time, you know, make it look nice. Now we'll put the skin on. Or the skin on the side. Actually, no, I like it on the side. flower on top of the fish it goes because this goes just goes so well actually really pretty and I have the this here Let's 
some sea salt. Last but not, last but not least, my blended soy sauce. I will do another episode on uh, how I make my own blended soy sauce. And it makes a big difference between like just regular soy sauce and the blended ones. Like that's a lot more umami, a lot more flavor. So it actually makes the dish a lot more tastier. So here we have it. Um, sea bass sashimi served with its skin cooked in kombu water and uh, multiple condiments that you can use to enjoy the fish. Chives, milga, sudachi and salt and wasabi with the soy sauce. Enjoy! So how I like to eat it, first we take some wasabi into the soy. So it's basically a wasabi soy sauce. But save some for later. So here, open up the fish. Put some scallion in here. Some wasabi. Some skin. Sandwich it. Oh, shoot. Okay. Like that. Sprinkle some salt. Some sudachi juice. And then one bite. so light and the sudachi makes it a lot more refreshing and then you can taste uh, the chives a little garlicky flavor and the salt you know bring off the sweetness of the fish so that's the first way and then the second once you have the salt and sudachi basically just go in with some soy and wasabi, just as it is. Oh man, it's so good. I'm gonna taste the shiso flour, the kanaho shiso. And now, kind of like a pellet cleanser, a little bit. Let's have some yoga. And that little gingery freshness kind of just cleans the pellet. You guys, you guys gotta try this. It's so good. So delicious. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.